And then the guy is like, oh, okay, okay, well, one more chance, one more chance, chance, one more, one more. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Mini Shitake. I am Flo, and today, as always, I'm joined by Jay. Hello! Hello, everybody, and you are watching Mini Shitake. If you want to see more of our content, see more of our stuff, videos, and our live shows, don't hesitate to give us a like, subscribe, uh, ring the bell, follow us on social media, all those cool things that you do on YouTube. But now, let's get on with the episode. What are we going to be talking about today? So today we're going to talk about driving in Japan. Is is uh, is driving in Japan that different from other places? I'm not really sure, but I'm going to have to compare with my experience driving in the Philippines and my recent experience driving in Japan. First, let's talk about the basic facts about driving in Japan. As we all know, Japan is a right-hand drive. That means that means you drive on the right side of the road. Nope, I lied. That means you drive on the left side of the road. And your steering wheel is on the right side of the car. How about in France? You lived in France before. I did for a long time. Uh, we, we drive on the right side like everywhere else. Ah. In the Philippines, we drive on you, the... You drive for their space? In the Philippines, we have the left-hand drive. That means the road we drive on is on the right side and the driver's seat is on the left side. Think of it this way. Everybody drives the same way, except the UK and Japan. Also, most cars in Japan are automatic transmission. Now, the types of cars on the road in Japan are usually 4x4, four four, hatchbacks, sedans, and the smallest, tiniest cars that they call keijidosha or K cars. So what are K cars? These are usually the, the lightweight city cars that you often see in the roads in Japan. So what's like one what of the more popular colors for cars that you see? This is a fun fact. Most of the colors you will find in Japan are pretty neutral. Usually I would see white, black, gray, and it would be rare if you find blue or red cars. And very, very rare if you see a yellow or a bright green or orange or, e or even pink. I'd like a pink car. If I was living in Japan, I would have a pink car. I know, right? The irony of the country. I mean, when you go to Tokyo, people would be quite extreme in some way how they express themselves. But oftentimes, when you go on a road, people would rather be discreet and simple with the, you know, with, with these vehicles they drive. And how about the basic rules when driving? So drinking while driving is strictly prohibited in the country. That means you're not allowed even to sip just a teaspoon of beer, whether you like it or not. That's kind of sad. I mean, it is kind of sad, but at the same time, it's safer. So I guess we can't really be mad. I remember in Manila, you can get away with it. Like, living in the Philippines, <laughs> a lot of people just get drunk and <laughs> try to act okay and still get away with it. In Japan, you can't do that. And um, all right, there, there are simple rules in this country. Like if you want to get drunk, you don't have to drive. You can just grab a taxi, call a taxi cab and uh, ask them to drive you home. Or your friends can do that for you. All right, have, a, have what we call a designated driver. 
Exactly. And then if you break the rule, like you really, really get drunk and you brought your car with you and there's nobody to pick you up or drive for you and you still try to drive while you're drunk, that's the end of your license. Oh, damn. It's like straight up. Yeah. Your license will be confiscated and you won't be able to drive for five years. Five years for like first offense? That, there's no offense. There's no first offense. That's it. Once they catch you drinking while driving or driving drunk, they just get your license and you don't get to drive for five years. All right. Now, of course, before you're able to drive, you need at least a license to freely go down the road in Japan. All right. So I'm really curious about that because I wonder... Okay, so I've had my license in France and I... Got my license here in Canada. So I'm really curious to see, like, what's the process to get your license in Japan? First, if you are staying in Japan for a short time, probably a year or two, then it's okay to have an international driver's permit. Now, to get an international driver's permit, you're going to have to obtain that in your home country before you even get to Japan. But if you want to extend your right to drive around the country, then that's the time you're going to have to issue yourself a Japanese driving license even before your IDP expires. Now, getting a Japanese driver's license wouldn't be that easy, especially for a lot of countries. So some countries don't have to even undergo the long process of getting a license. These countries are the UK. Canada, hey. Australia, Australia, New Zealand, and some parts of Europe. That includes France. So hey. you're, pretty lucky. <laughs> you're pretty lucky, Florent. Unfortunately, these countries such as America and the Philippines and the other countries that were not mentioned earlier are not on the lucky oh. side. How does it work? How do you get a license in Japan? before your IDP expires, probably around six months before, then you're going to have to apply at the driving license center in any area you're closest to. Like say, for example, I live in the countryside and the closest center is in Sapporo. Then I'm going to have to apply there. So, you know, the usual application goes where you have to apply on a piece of paper or you're going to have to do it online. And then you're going to do the usual test, eye test or the reading test and the knowledge of the traffic signs, the traffic rules and all that. And then once you pass that, once you pass all those, that's going to be the time you're going to have to spend a few weeks to practice in their driving schools. Oh, so you have to go to driving school. There's also an option exclusively for foreigners where you can pay less under these centers uh, and then you do the driving or you undergo driving school for probably two or three weeks. And then once you do, then you're going to have to do the official driving test. But that's not going to be easy because in my experience, I failed three times. You failed three times? I failed three times. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the driving test in the course was really difficult. Like, you know, the curves and the turns are really narrow. You know, the, the big cars you see in Tokyo, you're going to have to drive that. That's why getting a license in Japan is no joke, especially if you're a foreigner. So I've been Googling around, seeing other people's experience before I even get to the test. And a lot of them were saying how difficult it really was because it's very common for a foreigner to fail three times. That's even the minimum. <laughs> you know, like big mistake, like say, for example, you hit, you hit one of the sensitive tiny poles on the corner. Once you do, you fail the entire <laughs> test. And I did that a lot of times. I hit that tiny little thing because the curve is so narrow and the car is so huge i can't even turn a lot i'm like okay i need to just a little bit and i did that three times you still got it eventually 
Because there was a story in there. So first, I failed in Sapporo three times. And then I asked for advice from my employer. And my employer said, Okay, you can't apply anymore in Sapporo because you failed three times. And she's like, I know what we're gonna do. You're gonna have to change your address. And then we're gonna have to apply to another city. And I'm like, How are we gonna do that? And she's like, Watch. Hold my beer. So what she did is... Our company acted like one of the staffs adopted me and I had to change my address acting as if I'm living with this guy because he adopted me. So I got the address. I got the address changed from, uh, from, from my ID and that way I can legally apply to the center in that city. And then I did all the same thing again in that second city. And guess what? I failed three times. Again? You might wonder, how did I get the license? This is what I did. And I did the dramatic scene. I'm like, how can I do this? I can't work anymore. I need my car. <laughs> and then my employer told the staff, could you please... Be, be nice to this lady. She's trying to get a job. Could you please give her a chance? And I was like, I can't get my car. I can't do this anymore. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to quit my job. And then the guy is like, oh, okay, okay. One, one more chance. One more chance, chance. One more, one more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. It just happened. And they replaced the strict guy who failed me thrice, they replaced that guy into a much nicer guy. And then he was very, very nice to me. And he's like, slow down, slow down. He was saying that in Japanese. And I tried to understand. At that time, my Japanese was really, really bad. And um, I made it. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Thanks to my drama. <laughs> to give you an idea, the total cost that I had in that second city alone was about a thousand US dollars. And of course, I will show you the license that I got. All right, that's uh, that's it for our episode today. Uh, we talked about driving in Japan. We hope you enjoyed that. If you want to find more of our content, uh, you can give us a like, share, subscribe ring the bell all those things you do on youtube you can also find us on social media everywhere that's gonna pop up on the screen here it's also in the description below thank you for watching everybody we will see you all on the next one bye 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 i went to this serufu and i was very nervous because i didn't know what to do I, 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 I parked my car at the wrong side, took the pump, and I'm like, wait, this is too short. Okay, I need to... And then I returned it, and I I went to the, to the other side, and it was the same thing, and I'm like, oh no, I'm doing it the wrong way. And then there's a guy from afar, he was watching me, he was a staff, um, you know, he, he was on the lookout at the gas station and he was like in Japanese he was asking me do you need some help and I'm like I'm fine I'm fine and then I continued on and still doing the same thing and he's like okay let me let me help you out <laughs> <laughs>